when you're talking about the searching or accessing part of evidence-based practice, you'll often see this pyramid or some variations on it. It's a guide to what types of articles have the highest quality of clinical information. And this is great in theory, and oftentimes it does work, but the pyramid is a little bit misleading, and then it makes it look like you should always seek out a study or publication type that is higher up on the pyramid. As we shall see, some clinical questions can only be answered by cohort studies or randomized controlled trials or case series reports, and we'll look more into that in a little bit. The pyramid also doesn't mean to imply that lower levels of evidence aren't well written or good for the type of studies they are, and sometimes, unfortunately, higher levels of evidence like meta-analyses and systematic reviews aren't extremely well done. So you need to use your own critical thinking skills for that. And like I said earlier in the module, there'll be some more about study design later on in the term for you, but this is just a little bit of an overview. But in general, this is a good illustration of levels of evidence. Some researchers have thought there could be an alternate view of the hierarchy. You call systematic reviews and meta-analyses filtered literature sometimes, and that's because they take a whole bunch of other studies and try to derive some very systematic conclusions from them. So with this model, they've taken the top off of the pyramid and made it into a lens. And that's to signify that these types of high level evidence are really like lenses that you use to view randomized control trials, oftentimes, or other types of studies very closely if some of y'all as first years don't know all the nitty gritty about systematic reviews and meta-analyses, don't worry about that. Just know that they're often called filtered research and that's because they're a synthesis of many different other articles that have been carefully selected and filtered. But like I said, not every meta-analysis and systematic review is created the same and some have a lot better research protocols than others. And the wavy lines on the rest of the pyramid are to signify something similar. Not every randomized control trial is better than every cohort study in terms of its study design, how good the protocol is, and so forth and so on. So that's just to signify that there is a bit of a gray area and sometimes something lower down on the pyramid can be a better level of evidence for a certain question. So just as an FYI, if we are able to meet in person on January 16th, 2024, there might be several questions on the IRAT and GRAT that cover questions from this chart and the pyramid and different kinds of clinical questions. You don't have to memorize it, but know that a meta-analysis and then a systematic review are the very highest level of evidence, but you can't always get those for every type of question. Most commonly, you can find these for therapy or prevention questions. For all of the other types of questions, they are more rare. Uh, for a diagnosed uh, for a diagnostic question, usually it's a prospective blind comparison to a gold standard that you're looking for. That one's a little bit weird. For an etiology or harm question, usually the highest level of evidence is a cohort study. Same deal with a prognosis question. For any of the questions other than a diagnostic question, you just kind of work your way down the pyramid so if you can't find, for example, for a therapy question, if there's no meta-analyses, systematic review, RCTs, no cohort studies, no case control studies, no case series. Case series and case reports are kind of scrunched together on the last line there. But a case series is going to document more patients, 
uh, more instances of a case than just one case report. But sometimes in the case of a very rare disease, a case report or two is the best you're going to get. So in that instance, that might be the best level of evidence for a particular patient. It's where you put your evidence-based practice skills into practice. But if you can find a um, type of study design or publication that's higher up on this little list here for that type of question, then probably use that instead. There's also the last page of your handout that goes through appraisal questions. And I don't believe there's anything that goes into that level of figuring things out for your IRAT and your GRAT, but that's just good to know um, in life. If you find a meta-analysis for a question you're looking for, um, make sure that you look at the methodology, at least glance over it, make sure it's a good meta-analysis and something that you can trust. And there's more about that on the, the page I'm showing you right now. But also make sure you kind of can tell what these types of etiology or harm, diagnosis, therapy or prevention, and prognosis questions look like. Um, just look at the examples that I give you. I try to give you a couple of examples for each of these. And if you have any questions about this before the TBL, let me know. I'm not sure if we're even going to have an IRAT and a GRAT this year because we might have to do it online due to weather or COVID or something like that. Uh, we'll make it work either way. I want you to get something out of this either way. But the reason we're asking questions about this on the IRAT and the GRAT, um, if we can do one to begin with, is these are important just to know. So just take your time here, uh, maybe take some screenshots of the types of questions if you just want to look at them later. Uh, but it's mainly this hierarchy that you need to look at and just know what types of publications or study designs are the best uh, for answering these certain types of questions. I'm going to go through these types of clinical questions pretty quickly so this video doesn't go too long, but please feel free to pause and look at these slides. So therapy slash prevention questions are going to be the ones you run into the most often because those are the ones that are investigated the most by medical researchers. They involve choosing or comparing treatments. Uh, they can be two drugs a lot of time, but they can be surgical procedures, psychotherapy, music therapy, whatever type of therapy. And they're best answered, like we saw in our little chart, by meta-analyses or systematic reviews, if you can find them, and then randomized control trials, and then work your way down. And don't worry about that last thing yet. We'll talk about that in a little bit. That's just on the slide for reference for you. And it's going to be on the flow chart as well. With diagnosis questions, you're comparing two different diagnostic tests in order to confirm or exclude a diagnosis. You're looking at, you know, precision, accuracy, acceptability, safety, and expense. Expense might be a thing that you take into account with patient values going back to evidence-based practice because there might be an alternate to a $2,000 diagnostic test that might work just as well for $500 or $200 for your patients, but you need to investigate whether it will give you a, whether the more affordable test will give you as clear a diagnosis as the more expensive one. So things like that. And you are looking for a specific kind of clinical trial with diagnosis questions, uh, perspective blind comparison to a gold standard. And there's a little cheat sheet thing down at the bottom that we'll go over later as well. 
And then we have etiology or harm questions. And those are best answered by cohort studies, but you might only find case report. You can't have clinical trials for these types of questions because it would be unethical. You wouldn't get approval if you wanted to tell a one group of people to smoke two packs of cigarettes a day and another group to just be your control and not smoke because you needed a baseline. So with these, you need to get cohort studies, case series reports from people who have already had various health issues. And there's a couple of examples there as well. Risk and causality are key concepts for this one. And again, just refer back to that flowchart to see what kinds of studies you need to try to find. And we'll look at MeSH a little bit later. And finally, we have prognosis questions, which concerns the prediction of future events. The main form of the prognostic question is usually, what's the likelihood of this particular outcome in a patient with this disorder? Questions about progression of a disease or likelihood of a disease occurring. And prognosis questions, you might want to include terms, search terms for the outcome in your PICO chart. A lot of times, outcome is implied. But with prognosis, you might want to look for some terms like survival rate or disease progression. And you also, looking at the individual patient, may want to ask if there's any characteristics of the patient that make it more likely that they'd have a particularly good or bad outcome. And these are best answered by cohort studies much of the time, but again, refer back to your flowchart. I'll also point out the second page of our flowchart, which has some information about appraising the evidence for the articles and literature you find for different types of clinical questions. And these are just some good things to ask yourself or to glance over when you're looking at an abstract or, or skimming a paper so that you know that it is a study that is, so you know that it is a quality study no matter where it falls in the hierarchy.